In this video, I will show you the Microsoft Word file tab in depth. This video is one in a series taking a look at each of the Microsoft Word tabs and in many cases the corresponding ribbons in depth. This video though is all about the file tab. Let's get started. So here I am in my Word document and I'm just going to click here on file. Now this file tab is actually different than any of the other tabs on or above the ribbon. Typically when you click on a tab, the ribbon changes. So I click on the layout tab and the ribbon changes. I click on the draw tab, the ribbon changes. Insert, same thing. But when you click on the file tab, it actually takes you to a whole new screen. I don't see the ribbon at all. And that's what sets the file tab apart from the others. What kinds of things can you do with the file tab? Well, as you can see, there are a series of buttons here at the left, and depending on what you click, you get different options and features. So on the home button, we get the ability to, at any time, create a new blank document. So I can just click there, now I have a new document, it's blank. I can start working on it. I'm gonna click back on the file tab. I could also jump to one of these templates. I could create a banner calendar or a brochure or an agenda. Some of these I've recently used and that's why they're appearing here. If I want to, I can click on more templates and I can search for a specific template. So let's say I would like a budget. Typically I would do a budget in Microsoft Excel, but let's see if there are Microsoft Word budget related documents or forms. Looks like there's a reimbursement form and a gift shopping list, so similar to a budget. But you can search these online templates. If you find one that you want, let's say a meeting agenda, maybe I just really like how this one looks, I can just click on it and click Create, and Microsoft Word will pull that template into Microsoft Word so that I can use it, I can edit the text, change the details, and make this my own. Let's jump back to the File tab. So this new blank document, that's a great option, and each of these templates and the more templates that you can search for and get, those are fantastic. I'm gonna click back here on Home. In addition to these new items that you can create, we also have a list of our recent documents. And if I need to, I can search through those documents. So let's say specifically I need some synth pop related documents. This is my favorite kind of music, and by typing that in, it's showing me two recent documents that I can quickly open and access. Now, if there is a document that you're gonna be working on frequently, or maybe infrequently, but you wanna be able to find it easily and quickly when you need it, there's a little trick that you can use. So for example, this document here, I want to always be able to access this quickly. I can just put my mouse on it, and then go over here and click this, pin this item to the list button. If I click that, now when I go to pinned, notice that the Synthpop document is pinned to that list. So I can quickly just click on it, and there it is. So that's a trick that I've learned to use more and more when there's a document I'm gonna use a lot or that I just wanna be able to find very quickly. One word of caution, I would not recommend pinning a lot of documents. Just pin maybe two to six or seven documents. If you go beyond that, it kind of defeats the purpose of pinning a document. We also have a shared with me section. If people have emailed you Word documents and uh, shared those with you, you may be able to access them here. Okay, so that's the home button. I'm gonna go down here to new. Now this will look familiar. It's very similar to the look and feel here on the home button here at the top. But if you just want to get rid of some of these distracting things, just click new. Now you just have the basic blank document. I've got calendar and some other things that I've recently used templates for. And then I can search the online templates. Okay, so new is very similar to part of home. Next we have open. And once again, in some ways, this is similar to home. On home, I have a list of my recent documents and pinned documents. If I go to open, I also have a list of recent documents. But in addition to that, I can go to some of these other locations. I can browse this computer either here or here. I can go to some of my cloud services. And so this just is a nice page that I can use to open and access my documents. Next, let's look at get access. Add-ins. If I click on Get Add-ins, it takes me to the Office Add-ins service or store. These are basically little apps that you can add into your copy of Microsoft Word. So there's a Wikipedia add-in or app. There's an Excel to Word document automation. There's Adobe Acrobat Sign for Word. All of these little add-ins, many of which were created by other businesses, other companies. And this is a store that you can use to add those into your copy of Microsoft Word. Now, most of these are free. In fact, I don't remember ever seeing one one that wasn't free. I'm going to go down here to this one, Adobe Creative Cloud for Word and PowerPoint. I'll click
click add and continue and now here on the home tab and ribbon we can see there's an add-ins button but over here there's Adobe Creative Cloud I would need to allow and continue and then sign into my Adobe account to be able to really use this add-in but I have now changed the Microsoft Word interface I've added a new capability a new feature and it was done by going to the file tab get add-ins and then searching and finding an add-in yes there are other ways to get there but today we're focused on the file tab underneath add-ins we have info when you click on info it takes you to a screen where you can make some changes to the information about the document that you're currently working on so for example I can upload this into my cloud service OneDrive and I could select which one I want to add it to and then it would be uploaded let's get back into info I can share this document with other people I could copy the path of this document I could open the file location for this document I can do some things to protect the document so for example I could always open it read only so not editable at least not easily editable I could encrypt it with a password so that no one would be able to access this document unless they type in the password and there's all these other options that you can look through I can click here to inspect the document and look for any issues or problems it says I need to save it I've already recently saved there's a list here of different elements of the document that I could check for issues or errors I'll just select everything click inspect and it looks like everything for the most part is fine it found my add-ins and the document inspector isn't sure if I really want those I could remove them by clicking this button and there's a couple of other potential issues I'll click to close it next I could turn on version history for this document if I click here it gives me the option to turn on version history but if I do it's gonna upload this file into one of my cloud services and then every time I work on it a version of it will be saved so I'll have to think that through do I really want to do that but it is a nice option for many people next I could manage documents for example I could recover unsaved documents so every once in a while my computer runs out of battery life in the middle of a project and I would normally lose some work but because I have auto save set my work is auto saved and recovered and so this is a document that I may be able to recover if I want to I'm gonna cancel out of that going back to the file tab and info that's what these options are for let's look over here we also have a list of properties for my document its size the number of pages and words and how much time I've spent editing it notice that you can also add a special title a tag and even comments there we go it also has some information about dates when I last modified it when I created it and who modified it last it is possible to show even more properties you can click here and choose advanced properties and it gives you even more opportunities to add details about this document we also have statistics contents and some custom items at the bottom of this list here you'll see that there's an option to show all properties for this document so it gives me even more information okay let's move on remember we got here by clicking on the file tab and we're working our way down this panel next we have just a simple save and this will do just what you expect whatever work you've recently done on your document if you click file save it will be saved to the location where you most recently saved now why would you ever do that I don't know we have a quick save here at the top that's easier it's better but if you find yourself here on the file tab and want to save there you have it we can also do a save as and I'm sure many of you already know what a save as is what it does is instead of saving the recent changes over your current document that you've been working on it gives you the option to save as a new document so if I click save as I could change the title of this document maybe add a two at the end click save and now I would have actually two versions of this document the original that I saved and then the save as copy so file save and save as they sound similar but the first doesn't create another copy of the document it just keeps saving to the same location if you do a save as you end up with a second copy we can also save this document as an Adobe PDF now I don't recall seeing that before today and so I think that might be because I installed an Adobe add-in I think that's why I'm seeing that option I could be wrong we also have print if I click on print it tries to connect to a printer and get your printer settings I'm not connected to a printer right now so it's not gonna fully work but it also takes you to these print settings that you can look at and you can adjust these you can change how many copies will be printed you can decide whether the pages will be collated or not what's the page orientation gonna be the paper size letter or legal or any of those other options and so on let's move on 
on to share, I can share this document easily with other people by first saving the document to the cloud, usually to OneDrive. And then once it's in OneDrive, I can share the document. I could also click email and send this document as an attachment or as a PDF. And there's other options as well. Next, we have the ability to just create a PDF and then share a link to the PDF. It's pretty similar to some of those other options. And then we also have the option to present this document online. Notice that this option of present online will create a link for you to share with people. And it's basically a way of creating a very simple web page that's out there on the internet that people can go to and read. Let's move on to export. This is another way to turn this document into a PDF. There's a couple of different ways to do that in my case. Normally I just go here to create PDF and create PDF. And then I can just make sure this says PDF and then click publish. And this document now will be turned into a PDF file that's more compatible with more computers and smartphones, etc. Okay, so that's export, create PDF. You can also change the file type of your document and there's some other options we have as well. Let's go on to transform. This is another way to make this document basically into a web page. I can transform it into a web page. Notice that it's got these styles that I can choose from. So it's gonna be more than just a white page with text on it. I can make it look a little nicer by choosing one of these templates. And then I can just click transform. At that point, anyone in my organization that I share the link with will be able to access this page. Going back to file, we do have a close button. If you click close, it's going to try to close your document. In my case, I have some changes that haven't been saved. And so before it actually closes, it's gonna prompt me to save. We also have our account options and other options accessible here on the file tab. Let's briefly look at some of the account options. This is where you can go to change the photo associated with your account. You can switch the account. You can sign out of your current account. You can manage your privacy settings. You can change the office background, the color scheme and things like that. For example, I can switch from colorful to dark gray to get a whole different look and feel for Microsoft Word. Notice that I have a list here of some connected cloud services and I could add additional services by clicking here. I can update my copy of Microsoft Word and I could learn more about it and find out what's new in Microsoft Word. So these are some nice features to help me manage my account and even learn some new things about Microsoft Word. I'm gonna click on options. This gives me all of the possible options that I might need. Some of my favorites are here in customized ribbon and also quick access toolbar. You can really customize how the ribbon looks and what's on the ribbon or not on the ribbon and also the quick access toolbar. So check those out and watch my other videos on those topics of how to customize the ribbon and taskbar. So that's really what you need to know about the Microsoft Word file tab and the options and features and tools that you'll find there. I hope that you'll watch the other videos in this series on the Microsoft Word tabs and ribbons in depth. I also have similar videos for Microsoft Excel and in the future, perhaps PowerPoint and others. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. But you could also click the thanks button. You could support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll find out about all of those options in the description below the video.